Welcome to Build Your Maverick Business, the podcast for underdog, outlier, and renegade entrepreneurs. If you dream of going off on your own and launching your rebel empire, but don't know where to start, you're in the right place. We'll teach you how to use mindset, branding, and practical advice to build a killer business and transform your world. And now, here's your host, Alex Pitt. Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome back. Hope you've had a wonderful week. I am recording this on a Sunday morning and I am alarmingly fresh for a Sunday morning. (laughs) I went out on Friday night just to our local, just had a couple of drinks. Our local is a little bit like Cheers, like you walk in, everyone knows your name. So it was meant to be just Joe and I having one quick, quiet drink. But at the point where you know about 10 people and everyone's gathered around the same table having a lovely time. Do you know what happened, my loves? I forgot to eat dinner, but I didn't forget to drink red wine. So I thought I was going to die yesterday today and I went to bed at about 8 p.m. It was magnificent. I feel amazing today. I'm getting all this work done. I'm going to clean my flat. Oh, oh, holy productivity, Batman. So yeah, getting carried away on a Friday night does have its perks. Anyway, that's where we're at. And on that Friday night, I was chatting to a few people about what it's been like in the life after Strange. And like I've said in the last few episodes, it's been a while since I shut down Strange, but it's just more people are aware of it now. So I talk about it more freely. And one thing I I've noticed is that there are some really positive, only a handful of negative things about no longer running an agency. The main one, the main negative, I have to say, is I really miss the simplicity of explaining to people what I do for a living. <laughs> Saying I run a design agency is such a piece of piss. Trying to explain what Build Your Maverick business is and what it's intended to eventually be, a lot of people just glaze over. I've just started saying, oh, I'm a graphic designer, sod it. You know what that is. Let's move on. (laughs) So that's probably the biggest thing that I miss, to be honest. But one of the things that I don't miss, one of the things I really, really don't miss is the shitty clients. I was very lucky with Strange that our clients were lovely. Fortunately for me, by the time Strange had come around, I had been in the design game long enough that I started to notice when there were red flags in the initial onboarding, in the initial chats with clients. So we were lucky that we tended not to take them on. But that did not mean that we didn't have the conversations with them. We had to reject a few because we started to notice those red flags. I've been doing this for a while now and there are just certain patterns that come up time and time again. When you know that someone is going to be the bane of your life for the next God knows how long until you can invoice them and tell them to fuck off into the sunset. Joe and I were having a conversation about this because he is also self-employed. Joe is a very talented man. He does lots of different things from sound engineering to video editing to guitar repairs and setup. He can do so much shit. Very impressive man. So between us, we were sort of chuckling away about some of the more common personas, let's say. Some of the people that pop up and you just think, oh oh, yeah, one of them, one of them. So after we had this little chat, I was just like, oh, I can do something silly here. (laughs) And I never miss an opportunity to do something a little bit silly. So here's what we're going to do. I have put together, how many have I got? One, two, three, four. Four personas for twat clients. And I've given them names because why the fuck not? When I go through this list, I feel like if you run a service-based business, you're going to know exactly what I'm talking about because you've met one of them. You've probably met all of them. I made myself chuckle with this. So hopefully (laughs) it'll take the edge off if you happen to be working with any of these knobheads right now. So here we go. Red flags in clients. These are the personas. So first up, first up, we have false promise Freddy. Just as a slight side note, there are four of these. Pay no attention to the gendering of them. It's just that I wanted to do a rhyme and these are the first names that came into my head. So read nothing into it. Anyway, false promise Freddy. (laughs) I love my work. False promise Freddy. What he does, he will drop into your inbox. He will approach you and he tends to work for a fairly big company usually. He tends to work for quite a high profile company. It'll either be a well-known founder, a big corporation, a company that you'd know 
the name of. You know, they have, they're quite distinguished. They're quite established. They lure you in with the idea of working for this company, for this corporation. And they say to you, hey, if you do this one first job for me, for cheap or for free, I can promise you loads of work in the future. They say just this one, just this one introductory job. And then I'll give you the keys to the kingdom. You can be our regular go-to person. Don't you want to be part of this kingdom that we've built? I fell for this. I fell for a false promise Freddy. In hindsight, that nickname is a bit of a mouthful, but never mind. We've done it now. I'm not re-recording this. (laughs) I got drawn in in doing the website design and some other work for a startup run by a multi, multi, multi millionaire who ran a very large telecoms company. Now, I had heard of this person. I am not going to say who it is, and I'm not even going to hint at any of the details because I don't like to trash individuals. Large corporations, fine, but I'm not going to shit on individual people. I'm not that person. But yeah, this guy was a a very well-off individual. And I was told that if I could just do this one job for him, I was told by one of his minions, by the way, not by him directly, told by one of his minions, if you could just do this job for us, then we are going to get you to be the person to work on all of our design work for this startup. And it's going to be huge. You should be so excited about what we're promising you. So what did I do? I got very excited. I didn't get them to sign a contract. I spent my entire weekend doing what was promised to be about £1,500 worth of work. Then this multimillionaire turned around and said, oh, actually, we're probably not going to use this, so we're not going to pay you for it. So that to me at the time was my rent, my bills, and all of my food for the month. And this, I keep stressing, multimillionaire decided that he didn't want to use it. And so I got royally fucked over. I also don't think for a second that even if they had used that work, that I was going to be the go-to person. It was all very disappointing, very disheartening. The one good thing that did come out of it though, I have to say, is that the minion that was working for this multimillionaire recognised what had happened and went on to hire me on a different five-figure job. So it was all okay in the end. But why you need to avoid these people? If they really value your work, they really do have all of this stuff that they're going to send your way, why would they not just do it up front? Why do you need to to do a trial. <laughs> it just shows no respect for your art, for your skill set, and for you as a person. So how do we spot a false promise, Freddy? They promise you the world, but only after the first job is complete. So that is red flag persona number one. Number two, we have Eddie Entitlement. <laughs> Eddie Entitlement. <laughs> I feel like Eddie might be the most sinister of these uh, of these personas, I have to say. So what they do, what Eddie does, is he tells you that you're amazing. Oh my God, I love your work so much. Your portfolio is great. Your writing is sensational. You have come recommended to me. Seems great, right? Seems fantastic. But there is a snag. There is a problem. And that problem is that they don't think that they should have to pay you what you're charging. They think that they are just owed your service services because they like them and they want them. (laughs) They will want you to match their budget, even if it is much cheaper than what you charge, than your actual rates. And they know that. They know. They know what you're charging. It's no fucking mystery to them. They just think that they deserve to have what you're offering for the price that they have available. It is the equivalent of walking into a Bentley dealership, telling them you have enough money for a Skoda, and then being salty about it when you don't drive out of there in a Bentley. Eddie Entitlement needs to get a grip. And the really annoying thing about them is that when you say that this isn't going to work out because either A, you won't lower your rates for them or B, you do lower your rates and then you do a less than amazing job because they're not paying you as much. They are horrified. They are absolutely flabbergasted that this has worked out in this way. I remember working with one Eddie Entitlement back in the day and it was horrible. I ended up in tears a lot, mostly because this was at a time where I didn't feel comfortable or confident just breaking off working relationships with clients. This particular Eddie entitlement was not actually paying me enough to live on. And yet it just didn't seem like a viable option to me to walk away. So I stuck it out. And in the end, they threw their toys out of the pram and only paid me half of the fraction of the price that they were supposed to pay anyway. It was awful. It was a horrible situation. Anyway, how do we spot an Eddie entitlement? Well, here's what they're going to do. They're going to drop into your inbox and shower you with compliments. Do not get sucked in if they then decide that they want you to do it for cheaper. No, no. Feel free to let those compliments wash over you, let your ego grow and then block them. (laughs) 
Your rates are your rates for a reason. And if they can't afford you, people who are respectful of your skills will say, I look forward to when I will be able to make this work. They do not ask you to bend to their will. Okay, all right. Next up, we have Delusional Darren. (laughs) Delusional Darren. I'm having so much fun in this episode. Can you hear? So this guy might not actually seem that sadistic at first, might not actually seem like they're that much of a pain. But I promise you, if you can spot this early warning red flag, it's going to save you a lot of hassle in the long run. Because what they do is, again, they will come in and they will say, you seem very, or you've come recommended, or I would really like to work with you. All seems really positive. They might also be completely willing and able to pay you the money that you're asking. Brilliant. No issues. They're going to sign the contract fantastic so what's the issue i hear you ask well they slag off the person that was doing this job before you now you might think oh yeah the person before me probably was a bit shit what tends to happen with a delusional darren is they just seem to have bad luck with hiring people the freelancer before you was really shit the freelancer before that was terrible oh god i'm just cursed i can't possibly be the problem says delusional darren see where we're going with this i would be very 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 wary of anyone who hires you and tells horror stories of how shit the person was before you especially if there is more than one (laughs) it just tends to be that they are an absolute pissing nightmare to work with they have alienated everyone who has tried to do that job for them in the past I actually found myself once in a chain of delusional Darren's victims. I was told at the start of a project that the designer before me was awful. She's terrible. She's so unorganized. She this, she that, she the other. I worked with this client until they were so abhorrent as a human being that I had to break it off. Told them even at the time I actually needed the money. Couldn't handle the hassle. So I said, no, thank you. I'm going to move on from you. Pass them on to another designer who was a friend of mine who I must say, before you protest my lovely listeners I warned them I told them this guy is a fucking nightmare move forward at your own risk he said ah don't worry about it I can handle him three weeks later this grown man called me in tears called me saying what the fuck what 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 did I do to deserve this it turns out that he was accusing me of being a terrible designer to that guy and was then accusing the new designer of being shit at his job what is the common denominator delusional fucking Darren so how do we spot them should be an easy one if they make any shitty comments about the person that came before you Just Just know that they are probably the problem and it's just not cricket, is it? To start bad-mouthing other people. We don't want to do it. So we'll put that one in the fuck it bucket. We don't want to work with delusional Darren. And finally, we have Scope Creep Sally. And yeah, I sang it to the tune of Mustang Sally. I haven't written it down like that, but that's how it came out. So that's what we're going with. Scope Creep Sally. So Scope Creep Sally, sung to the tune of Mustang Sally, if you like. I have to say I have some bad news on this one. She's not always that easy to spot and that's because she might not fall victim to any of the other issues that you see with these other red flag clients right she's willing to pay the money she's willing to pay the money on the first project she's excited to be working with you she has mad respect for everybody else that she's ever worked with she seems great to sally she seems like a riot we're excited to work with her we get an actual brief we're not being micromanaged we're having a lovely time then what happens you send over the final designs the final copy the final deliverables and she she hits you with a, this is a great start. Oh God, you got a scope creep, Sally. <laughs> so Sally will make sure that she bleeds you fucking dry every time. You've agreed on a project fee. She is guaranteed to make you do six times as much as was originally agreed because she's just going to ask you for little changes. 10,000 of them, but they're only little changes. That'll only take you five minutes. And she always sends them over with a sickening smile. Like, oh, this is so fantastic. Can you just change this, change this, change this, change this? change this say goodbye to your loved ones you won't be seeing them for a while because i've got a few of these every time you make the changes and you bend to her will she finds more she's got more comments she's got more notes you have to turn off notifications in your google docs because you're getting 20 emails a second it never ends i'll never be able to send this invoice is this even the same project anymore she's changed so fucking much i can't even remember what i do for a living yeah scope creep sally will fuck you up and like i say pals they're not always that easy to spot scope creep sally is not always that easy to spot 
The only, only thing I can say to try and avoid people like this is put something in your contract that says how many rounds of amends you are willing to do. If anyone questions you on it before they sign the contract, be aware. If anyone signs the contract and then starts doing that shit, you've got a contract in place. Refer back to it. No, no, Sally. Off you fuck. Not doing this with you. Not playing this game. Right then, loves. Watch out for them, all right? They're out there. They'll get you if you're not careful. But as long as you acknowledge that service-based businesses are always going to have these kinds of people, it's not you. It's not your problem. Just make sure you're batting them away as fast as they approach you. You'll be all right. All right, my darling. That's it for me for this week. (laughs) Have a wonderful rest of your week and I'll catch you here next time. If you love what you're hearing in this podcast, and you are still yet to start that rebel empire of your own, I've got something that might help. Head over to the show notes of this episode where you will find a free seven-step action plan to kick-starting your first side hustle. It's got pretty pictures, it's got activities. What more could you want, my loves? Get it downloaded, try it out, let me know how you get on. <laughs>